Hey guys, how are you? Uh, another video today. Um, <clears throat> before we get into some music, um, I want to talk about a beer I'm drinking. Um, this is from Hubbard's Cave. It's called Me Love to Eat Oreo Cookies. Um, this is an Imperial Stout with chocolate Oreos, vanilla beans, and lactose. Um, Hubbard's Cave, um, as with a lot of the other great beers I drink, is out of Chicago. I believe actually Elk Grove Village, maybe? which is a suburb. Um, those of us in Illinois just call everything up there Chicago, so if it's within a 50-mile a radius, it, it's pretty much Chicago until you get down to Joliet. Um, but this is a beer. Uh, I pretty, probably can't tell. If you look real close there, you see some white speckles, and that's actually the some of the cream filling from the Oreo cookies. Um, this is an imperial stout that's rather sweet. If it smells like the um, Oreo cookie filling and tastes like the chocolate cookie, um, it is delicious. Um, the alcohol in this is 12%, pretty high. Um, probably, this is a pint, so 16 ounces. Oh, it says right here. They're from Niles. Sorry, another suburb of Chicago, not a little village. Um, they put out quality beer. This one's 12%. Um, very sweet, very decadent. Um, you don't want to drink this beer and then go backwards to a non-sweet um, beer because it, the non-sweet beer is just going to taste like nothing. Um, so if you want to end your night, this is probably a good good place to do it. But um, love Hubbard's Cave. They do a French toast um, stout. That was actually the beer that got me into craft beer. Um, taste, it's like drinking French toast. It's very weird. I had another French toast um, beer, I think, in one of my other videos, but um, the Hubbard's K1 uh, is great. So, drinking that tonight. Um, as you can tell by the title, this is about the band Metallica. And I thought, as big as the band has become, um, I thought it'd be cool to kind of talk about how I came to discover Metallica and kind of the funny story behind it. Not so much how I came to discover them, but the meaning behind my first purchase of Metallica, what I thought it was, um, and what I didn't realize it was until probably, I want to say a year or two after I got it. So I had heard bits and pieces of Master of Puppets, but um, nothing really pulled me in at the time. I was still kind of in my, I guess, glam metal phase. Um, a friend of mine was into Iron Maiden, Metallica, um, some other stuff, and we didn't really spend time with the, the cassette. Um, it was just one of those albums that was there. Um, I didn't really know much about Metallica. Um, so I just kind of um, forgot about it. Um, and then years later, I would say, gosh, I don't know what year it would have been, um, but I had decided, you know what, everyone keeps talking about this band Metallica. I think Master of Puppets was out, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and Justice for All was not out yet, so I'll have to look at the timeline there. But I said, I'm going to, I can't, this is pre-internet, so I couldn't just go somewhere and listen to Metallica anywhere, um, unless it was at a friend's house. So I said, you know what, I'm going to save up some money. I'm going to go to the local record store. I'm going to drop some of my hard-earned money on this Metallica band and see what they're all about. So um, what I did is I went to... Uh, the chain I think was called Coconuts. I believe that was a record chain, at least from where I'm, where I live. Um, they it was kind of your run of the mill um, record store that you probably would see anytime in the '90s. Uh, they carried all the pop shit. They had a little bit of metal, but not a lot. Um, it really wasn't that great. But I said if I'm gonna explore this band, I want to spend the least amount as possible. That way, if it sucks, I'm not out. Believe it or not, that people used to pay. I guess people still pay this amount, but I think cassettes were like fifteen ninety nine, sixteen ninety nine. Um, complete fucking rip off cassettes. I mean, there's a reason black metal bands put out cassettes. They're cheap to make. Um, I think you, if you do a limited run, I think you might spend three or four dollars. Um, so record companies were have been raping um, customers on cassettes and CDs for so long. CDs are even cheaper to make, but we'll get into that another day. Um, so I went to Coconuts and I said, I want to buy Metallica, looked at what they had available. There was Kill em All, 
Ride the Lightning Master Puppets, and then there was this gem. Um, Garage Days Revisited, the 598 EP. Um, this is the actual copy that I bought. Uh, still have had it over all these years. Um, there was a sticker on it that said something about it being, uh, this is kind of the funny part, um, that it was an EP of um, cover songs, right? So, and also says, I don't know if you can see here, each side of the cassette um, contains the same program. So you play one side, flip it, same songs on the other. I did not know what a cover song was. Um, not heard the term before. Um, again, don't remember how old I was, but um, no one had ever told me what a cover of a song is. So what I thought a cover song was, was the song that represents the cover of an album. So um, what I did is I pulled Master of Puppets out. And I said, oh, so Master of Puppets is the cover song. Um, I looked on the back of here and I saw Helpless, Small Hours, The Weight, Crash Course in Brain Surgery, and Last Crest, Green Hell. I went to uh, Ride the Lightning. Hey, there's a song called Ride the Lightning. That's the cover song, right? None of these songs were what I knew to be cover songs. Um, there was, I looked at Kill Em All. There's not even a song called Kill Em All. Um, where, what are these cover songs? Who, where did these songs come from? I had no idea. I was completely lost, but I said, fuck it. I'll buy it. It's five songs. What do I have to lose? Um, so this is the original um, cassette that I listened that day. Not much to see here. A lot of cassettes look like this, especially the mass-produced ones on, like, Electro. I think that's what Talc is on. Um, they were clear or white, usually. Um, and then the inside here... Uh, this is the the J card, I believe they call it. And here's the um, the inside. I'm trying to get the lighting right. Um, so I popped it in with headphones on. I did not want my mom to hear this. Um, and Helpless is the first song. I loved the music, especially with headphones on, but the, the vocals, um, James Hetfield's vocals really took some time for me to get into. Um, so uh, I listened to this. Um, the first side, I was like, eh, I don't really see what the hype's about. I flipped it over, listened to it again, and something pulled me in after that second list, and I think I flipped that tape about five times um, that night, listened to it, listening to it on headphones. Um, looked through the liner notes, not really thinking um, much of it. They kind of talk about, hey, we came off the Puppets tour in February of 87, um, of course, Cliff had passed away, um, and this was kind of like Jason Newstead's um, introduction to Metallica. We're going to plug in and play some songs. Um, it wasn't until years later, um, I want to say two to three years later, someone said, hey, you need to check out this band called The Misfits. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll check them out. And I heard um, Last Caress, and I'm like, what? I know this song from somewhere, and I could not place it for the life of me. Um, and of course, as you metalheads know, Last Caress is on here. Um, played about four times the speed of The Misfits. Um, and I said, wait a minute, I need to go back to that cassette. Um, and I got a little smarter with cassettes and reading liner notes. And if you can read liner notes on a cassette, probably too, can't tell in here, but under each song over here, it's going to list um, who wrote the song and then who published the song. And I was looking through this, and, and I said, okay, I don't know who Harris Tatler are. They're, they're not in Metallica, and they wrote Helpless. Um, I don't know who Holocaust is. They wrote Small Hour. And then I got to Last Caress, and I saw Danzig, and I thought, Danzig's in The Misfits. I knew Danzig from Danzig. And I put two together, and someone said, oh, you idiot, you didn't know a cover song was when a band does a ver their own version of another band. I said, I had no fucking idea. Um, so that's when I discovered, um, oh, all of these songs are cover songs of other bands, uh, which led me to go explore um, other bands. So when I heard Crash Course and Brain Surgery, I liked that intro bass line. Um, I went back to that um, record store, and picked up a Budgie, a uh, Budgie cassette, which I still have. They wrote Crash Course in Brain Surgery. Um, so, yeah, this is my uh, intro to Metallica. 
um, probably a little different than many people's exposure. A lot of people either came in really early or they came in around the, um, the peak of And Justice for All and the Black Album um, coming out. So my first um, full-length metallic album was And Justice for All. And then I worked my way backwards, um, Master Puppets, Ride the Lightning, Kill Them All. And then once the Black Album came out, they, they fucking exploded. But I thought you guys enjoyed hearing um, my ignorance uh, on what a cover song is, how I discovered Metallica, how it led me to go through the liner notes of all my cassettes and say, oh shit, I bet there are other bands out here that have done covers of songs and I've had no idea. So I'd go through the liner notes and see who wrote the song. Um, sometimes they would say, um, originally performed by band name. Um, I would go look those bands up and see if they had any cassettes out at the record store. So, um, yep, that was my, my intro to Metallica. Um, this is still one of my favorite leases, probably Cinemoto Value. Granted, they're all cover songs, they're not Metallica songs. Um, but still something I, I put on from um, time to time. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that, my journey to Metallica. Um, I don't know if I'll do that for other bands. I might just to um, tell the story of how I discovered certain bands. Um, there's sometimes a lot of cool stories I'm behind that, whether you see them opening for another band, maybe they handed you a free tape outside of a show or something like that. So hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. Catch you all later.